Hey everybody, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Got Blake Cashman today joining me on the Hanging Ron Johnson segment. Looking forward to that. Eden Prairie native, University of Minnesota Gopher, now a Minnesota Viking. He's living every kid's childhood dream to play for their hometown professional team, and he's going to do it this year. We're going to talk to him, but he brought a couple friends from Texas with him. Talk to him about his thoughts about those guys, but there was an NFL draft. Blake tells us his thoughts on the NFL draft. But I definitely want to talk about it because there were some winners and some losers. And we're going to talk about all that and much more coming up next on The Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcasts. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now The Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everybody, as mentioned, I'm Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. For those that are new to the Ron Johnson Show, I want to thank you guys for subscribing, for joining. For those looking on watching on YouTube, we thank you. Continue to like, share, download, tell a friend to tell a friend that we are here. The Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota is a proud partner with Tegna NBC. And we want you to know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 bucks win or lose imagine that fanduel.com backslash locked on to get started that's all you have to do and again win or lose so put some money down on the timberwolves to beat the nuggets to start the series because that's most likely what's going to happen they're going to steal it in denver to start off the series, they're going to set the tone right away, so they can end it in four. No, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. I'm not going to get far ahead of myself. Let me bring Sam Maxwell to the show. Uh, he's my producer, my co-host, uh, the guy that helps me with everything that we do. Uh, Sam Ekstrom. We also we're going to talk to a, a former coach of JJ McCarthy's coming up next week. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, but again, I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Ekstrom. This is Locked On Sports Minnesota, and this is the Ron Johnson Show. Sam, there was an NFL draft that mm -hmm. took place, and the Minnesota Vikings, paying off the tees, they were one of the winners. There were a couple winners out there. I mean, the Bears, people were saying they won with uh, the receiver, Romeo Dunze. Uh, they got their quarterback in Caleb Williams, which I don't know why they didn't just tell everybody we're taking Caleb Williams, but maybe they wanted to make some GM scramble and figure out what they would do if the Bears go elsewhere. Um the Cardinals, even though they got Marvin Harrison Jr., didn't get a lot of buzz because you're still stuck with Kyler Murray, and people aren't too sure Kyler Murray is the answer in, 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 in Arizona. But the losers, one of the losers, and people are still baffled by this, is the Atlanta Falcons. Like, taking a quarterback with the eighth overall pick, now the, the, the conversation that happened between the GM, uh, Fontenot, and the owner, Arthur Blank, now the words are coming out of what he said. He said, hey, what if we win for a couple years with our quarterback, talking about Kirk Cousins, and then what happens when he retires? Do we just go back to mediocrity? Do we go, no, let's go get a quarterback now because what are we going to do next year? What are you going to do the year after that? You can get a quarterback the next year. You can get a quarterback the year after that. Like he acts like there's quarterbacks that are never coming again. Like, and so that's what's funny to me, but this is not the Atlanta Falcons show. Uh, this is more about Minnesota sports. And so I'm going to stick to that. We'll maybe handle that in, in the Friday round table. And we have a little bit more time to discuss the draft and the winners and losers. Uh, just paying off the tease of one of the topics I would like to discuss. But Sam, when, when looking at this NFL draft, I'm going to start off and say, yeah, the Minnesota Vikings got it right when they took J.J. McCarthy. He fell to them exactly where they thought he would. He, they did have to go up one pick just in case if the, the Broncos or somebody else tried to do something. Uh, so they went up one pick, dropped back. You know, they they gave up, I think, the Jets or whatever, but they gave up some late-round picks. I don't think it's a huge deal. They still went out and got another cornerback that I talked about to fill the spot, the exact guy that I said it would be. So I, yeah. can't, wait. I can't wait to join the football party this week and uh, make sure Luke Luke Braun understands that I just I just know. I have a feeling sometimes. Spidey and, sense. Yeah. My party senses. And I remember when we talked about free agents and I was like, oh, it'd be nice if Blake Cashman could come back to Minnesota. Look what happens. 
Blake Cashman comes back to Minnesota. I didn't think it was going to happen, as I said with Blake, and you'll see that in the interview coming up. But I was like, it would be nice because they do need an inside linebacker. Blake's a free agent, and it worked out. Hometown kids coming home. But Sam, with the NFL draft, the Minnesota Vikings took care of the rush situation. You already have Grenard, you have Van Ginkle, and now you add Dallas Turner, who is one of the most fluid loose rushers that they call him which means he can come from a number of spots and he doesn't he's not like a robot he's not stiff he can he's bendy at the hips he can line up in the a gap he can line up in the y9 the five he can also drop back into coverage because he is a true outside linebacker you also have two other ones but then you went and got your quarterback now whether sam darnold plays for five games one game 16 games J.J. McCarthy is the future. Him and Justin Jefferson are already talking about nicknames and what do you want to be called and what should I be called? Well, it's Jets and J.J., so we already know that. We say J.J. because we were used to that with Justin Jefferson. Now it's Jets and J.J. So Justin Jefferson is already told, hey, man, they call me Jets. Don't worry about what the media calls me. They want to call me J.J. I'm Jets. So he's Jets around the building. You got J.J. McCarthy around the building because I asked his coach, too. I'm like, does he go by J. Mac? JJ, one of his Michigan coaches, like his JJ. So I was like, all right, we got JJ and we got Jets now. Um, and then again, you get Kyrie Jackson, late round corner. Uh, you go get a swing tackle as well, because we know that was an issue at times where Brian O'Neill's went out, uh, Christian Darisol's gone out. And every time we're all like, who's going to play tackle? Well, now they have a swing tackle. And so I, I feel like they filled just about every knee. Now they did have a lack of picks. So I have to be honest there. So they couldn't do everything, but. I think they won the draft, like not overall, but I do think they were one of the winners because I saw the article of like 10 winners and 10 losers. The Vikings were up there, and I agree. I don't know, Sam. What do you think? You're getting two high-impact players in round one. I mean, a lot of a lot of drafts, Ron, that's kind of what you hope for. You yeah. hope to get two high-impact cornerstone pieces. I mean, there are some drafts in the Vikings' recent past where all the players are gone. None of them signed a second contract. They're all gone. Um, so if you have two guys that stick around for a long, long time, that, that does amount to a pretty successful draft. I think that it's disappointing not to have any picks on Friday, but you know they got two picks on Thursday, so it kind of evens out. If, interesting nugget, day three. Guess what the average age was of their day three draft picks? I got for the Vikings? For the Vikings. Yep. Uh, 21. 23.8 okay. average age. You've got couple of 50-year seniors, a 60-year senior, old guys. And that kind of makes me think that that maybe they could be ready to be role players pretty fast. They've got a lot of reps under their belt. I mean, I, I, I look at a guy like Walter Rouse, who's played how many thousands of snaps in college. He might be able to be your swing tackle. Michael Jurgens could be a swing interior lineman. Uh, and you've got a kicker, obviously. It wasn't the sexiest day three, but you may have added pieces to your roster. But it's really all about the first round guys, Ron. You've got a quarterback who might start seeing the field as early as this year. And you've got an edge in Dallas Turner. I mean, Ron, tell me if I'm wrong. I think he probably is playing week one. Maybe not starting, but he's playing. He's in the rotation week one. And I could see some Flores packages that have Van Ginkle, Turner and Grenard all on the field at once, terrorizing opposing passers. Yeah, because you have to remember uh, DJ Wanham, Daniil Hunter, um, they also bought in, uh, what's his name? Andre Carter. Like they, they have packages where they can have multiple, uh, edge rushers and that he's just adds to that. But again, I, I talked about this Grenard. We know can kick down to the five technique. Like he's strong enough. He's big enough. Blake Cashman talked about that. He said a lot of his plays sometimes, and we'll get that in the interview, um, where, when he was in front of Blake Cashman, meaning he had kicked down a little bit because Blake is an inside linebacker and Grenard kicked down a little bit to be kind of in front of him. And Blake was able to, whether it's twist, whether it's, you know, he's going to spill it and I'm going to make the tackle. He said a lot of his big plays tackles for a loss sacks were with Grenard in front of him. Uh, so that speaks highly of how Grenard can kind of move around on the line. Uh, and then Dallas Turner. Yeah, you got it, especially third and 17, third and 11. Third and eight, the money down to get off the field. You got to have Dallas Turner out there. And I know Brian Flores is like sitting back like Dr. Evil, like one billion sacks. Like he is ready for this. And for those on YouTube, you have to be on YouTube to see what I just did. I did my I did my Dr. Evil impression. I'll do it again on the football party because I know Luke Braun loves a good impression. But I could see Brian Flores sitting there like, how many sacks are you going to get this year, coach? One billion sacks. Like Brian Flores is ready for this. And again, you add a corner 
and uh, Kyrie Jackson, who's 6'3", 6'2"-ish. You know, 6'3", I guess. They give him 6'3". But when you think about that, it's a Caleb Evans. Like, we talked about how long a Caleb Evans was, how they loved a Caleb Evans. What did Brian Flores go do? Find him another Caleb Evans. Why? Because Byron Murphy Jr., you can kick him down. Or the second? Is he the second or junior? I got him confused now. Is he Byron Murphy the second that we have? Or we have the junior? Uh, yeah, great question. I, I think he's the second. Yeah, I think they, the junior was yeah. Texas. Um, but they can kick him down into the nickel because we've talked about that, him being able to be a – because Ryan Clark, man, we had him on, and he said Byron Murphy was a traveling cornerback. He was a cornerback that can play everywhere. He was si- – like he didn't have a side. He didn't have a spot. You can put him in the nickel. And so I don't think they ever could do that because they needed him to be the dog corner out there. Well, now if you bring in Kyrie Jackson on one side, a Caleb Evans, you still have uh, uh, the guy they got from Clemson. And now you have Byron Murphy that can go into the slot. So there's a lot you can do. Uh, Because Byron Murphy, too, with his height, he's short enough that you can sneak around an offensive tackle and the quarterback not see you corner crash. So I'm excited about this defense and what it can look like. You got an offense that you already have weapons, and now possibly J.J. McCarthy could be your quarterback. And the Minnesota Vikings did not leverage all their first-round picks to go get J.J. McCarthy. And I think that's the other part of this. They He fell to them and from the get-go he said he wanted to be a viking he told his head coach he wanted to be a viking um and again there's no reason for uh john jim harbaugh to lie like he's an nfl coach why would he help out another team and say oh he's lying he didn't want to he wanted to be a giant or he wanted to be a jet or whatever no like he's he's i said man he told me he wanted to be a viking and i'm proud of him and i'm happy for him because if that's the case he would have took him he didn't take him with his pick you know so we kind of all have our answers now harbaugh knows where he wanted to be mccarthy's where he wanted to be and kevin o'connell got his guy but we got to move on to the Blake Cashman interview. I'm excited about that one. We also got the Daily Three coming up. That's three questions. We're going to spend about a minute each today, but we'll do all that after a word from our sponsors. We are presented today by FanDuel. NBA playoffs in full swing. NHL playoffs in full swing. Baseball in full swing. Twins have won eight in a row. Hammer that money line at FanDuel. Your place to bet every game, every sport. Uh, I saw the Nuggets are favored at like minus 230 to win the series. You can get plus money on the Timberwolves. Go hammer that now before the Wolves steal game one. If you're a new customer, get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed at FanDuel. $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on a safe, secure, easy-to-use app. So what are you waiting for? No reason to, to delay FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet an automatic W. <coughs> FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And now it's time for the Hanger Ron Johnson segment. And uh, I always love this one. Uh, Blake Cashman is going to join me. And of course, I mean, I've known Blake since like Drake Dobbs was like a fifth grader. Drake Dobbs plays basketball now. St. Thomas for those that are Tommies or Johnnies. Um, but also Carter Coughlin plays for the New York Giants. I know I've known Carter. His dad was a gopher, so I've known Carter since he was young. And then I got a chance to meet Blake Cashman uh, because football players love to play basketball. I mean, I've seen him at Totino Grace games and the state championships, so on and so forth. And now, I mean, we had him on the show before as a Houston Texan, as a gopher. But now as I bring Blake Cashman to the show, I, I'm excited because I get to wear my Vikings gear because it's not weird now. Before, like when he was a Texan, I had to kind of – you know, I had to keep it neutral and just do an interview as a gopher, you know, wear my gopher shirt. Now I can I can kind of celebrate with you as a Viking. So I'm, I'm going to I'm excited about the season, too, because I mean, every pregame show I get to talk about guys, pick guys. So I'm definitely going to be like texting you for, you know, I used to text like Thielen in the morning or whatever. So I'm going to have to start texting you every once in a while. I'll be like, hey, what's, what's going on with this uh, blitz package? But Blake Cashman now plays for the Vikings. Uh, Blake, right off the bat, man, you're 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 from Minnesota. You went to Eden Prairie. You play for the Gophers. Not a lot of people can play in high school where they grew up, play for the college they state they lived in, and now play for the professional team. And you're you're less than a one percent or a zero 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 point one percenter. Um, what is that like being back home wearing purple, knowing you grew up watching them in high school? Well, it's always been you know something since the day I got drafted. You know, I wanted to be a part of this organization just because of what you said. Um, not many guys that get to play professional football so they do it in front of their hometown and it makes my journey special and what I'm most excited about is just being able to share this experience and this journey with uh, you know all my friends and family that are here along with you know 
the Minnesota fans that you know have also supported me in high school and college as well. And, and what number are you wearing, by the way? Because I don't even think I looked that up. What number are you gonna wear? Uh, wearing fifty-one. Okay. Okay. Retired. I didn't know that at the time. You know, of course, <laughs> when I uh, signed with the Vikings, it's one of the first things I did. And I looked on the roster. I'm like, damn, this is great. I got to keep my number again. And uh, and then O'Connell texted me and was like, hey, just to give you a heads up, 53 is retired. So I had to make a change. You should have been like, hey, I'll, I'll put a million dollars to that family if they let me wear the 53. <laughs> <laughs> but but when you talk, because like, it's like, like speaking of that. So I've seen Devondre Campbell. I mean, you know Devondre. So Devondre mm -hmm. Campbell just tweeted this, that he's never had to pay for his number 59. He finally had to pay for it. Uh, with the 49ers and i don't know who had it but he paid the kid for it uh we've seen kirk cousins talk about with the falcons he was willing to pay a certain amount but not too much and clearly uh the the, the tight end pits was asking for too much if somebody did have number 53 how much because now i mean you you got you got big money now how much would you have been willing to pay for that 53 well i don't have big money like kirk or uh <laughs> dre but um Honestly, I probably would only give maybe two, three thousand. That's about as important <laughs> it is. You know, if I had, if I had, you know, that bag like Kirk does, you know, I definitely would uh, be willing to spend a lot more. But how I think is, you know, I look at, you know, my uh, what is it, the NFL PA account, where it shows you, uh, you know, how much jerseys you're selling or what you're making off. Right. Uh, yeah your name and your brand. And so I'd probably take that into account and then use that to justify how much I'd be willing to pay a teammate for the number. Okay. Okay. Cause I was gonna say like you were 36 in, in college. What did you wear in high school? Uh, my senior year, I was 23. 23. Uh, so 23 is taken. I mean, you could have gone with a single day. Have you ever thought about wearing like six? Cause you were 36 in college. You could have been six in the pros. I, I don't know if you ever thought about, I think the single, single did Pat, star, you know, uh, Queen with the Ravens did the six and Eric I Kendricks. Single digits. I do. But um, 36 was actually available. I thought about going back to that just because I'm going back, you know, to my, my hometown and, uh, you know, kind of be able to pull the number back from my, my college days. But I don't know. I just like the idea of 51. Uh, as okay. a linebacker in the NFL, and uh, you know, for whatever reason, even since I was a rookie, I always liked the, the number fifty-one for a linebacker. And, and in a way, I'm kind of forced to change, obviously, my number, but I've always been drawn to it. So it was kind of an easy yeah, because Dick Buckus was fifty-one. You got Ben Lieber, former Viking, was fifty-one. He's on our pregame show, so I'm pretty sure we'll be talking about that a little bit. Um, but but the one thing I did want to ask you: so leaving the Texans. How fun has it been to kind of see like other guys from the Texans, you know, like you got to come here with Grenard now um, and then also Van Geekle, a big 10 guy. Um, and then, you know, you know, CJ Ham from IFA, like how fun has that been actually knowing additional guys in the locker room, but also bringing a guy with you? I love it. You know, uh, especially when you bring a guy with you, you know, I, I said it on a few other interviews where a lot of my big plays last year came uh, when Grenard was lined up in front of me, you know, he's an outstanding player, you know, one of the best locker room guys I've been around. So uh, it always makes it feel better when you know you got a guy like that in front of you and he's coming with you to a new team. But, uh, you know, the transi transition to come to Minnesota, I think, is easy just because it's home. But mm -hmm. when you get into a new locker room, you don't know many people. Like when you have a bunch of guys you're already familiar with, it definitely – I think just makes the transition even easier and better uh, because, you know, those are guys you can lean on. And I've known CJ for a long time. So, um, you know, it's great to use him as a resource just to kind of know how the Vikings operate, how they do their schedules. You know, what are, what's the strength staff like? What's the train staff like? Mm -hmm. Who should I see if I got this problem? So uh, it's definitely very helpful. And when you think about that, you said one thing I wanted to hit on, you, you kind of talked about um, guys in the locker room. You know, aside from the guys in the locker room, like you said, you're from Minnesota. That's an easy re you know reason to want to come back home. Uh, being a free agent, you know, you, you kind of had your choice of here's where I can go. Here's where I can be a part of. Um, here's what I can do. 
what what are your thoughts on Brian Flores' deep? Like, what what led you to be like, you know what? I really like the way this defense is led. I really like the way he runs his defense um, to make you want to sign with the Minnesota Vikings. Well, just how exotic it is, and it gives guys that are lined up all over the place, whether you're a defensive back, linebacker, you know, edge rusher, DN, like everybody gets the opportunity to make you know the big plays and you know it keeps an offense guessing at all times just with all the different fronts and movements so um you know it's an exciting defense to be a part of and you know if we can make it all click then it's going to pay out for us and you know it should help us win a lot of football games and uh i i know a lot of guys that have worked with flores in the past and everyone mm -hmm. has you know raved about him said great things so um you know, it's just reassuring to know, like, you're going to be a part of a uh, defense that, you know, the guy in charge is uh, a good coach and a good dude. And when you look at, you know, the NFL draft, you know, you've been a part of it. You were drafted. Uh, you have new guys in your locker room now that have been welcomed to the NFL fraternity. But you guys went out and got J.J. McCarthy, Big Ten quarterback. You went out and got uh, a defensive end outside linebacker that a lot of people thought was a top 15 guy, uh, top 10 guy for some drafts earlier. And now, you know, because of the way the draft went six quarterbacks uh, in the, in the first, you know, whatever, 12 picks, you now have Dallas Turner as well. When you saw kind of the way the first round rounded out, how, I guess, excited were you about you? Cause you, you know, you're signed for four years about your next four years with the Vikings. You know, I uh, always think the draft is, you know, crazy time, you know, whether it's your year or you're watching from afar. Uh, but, you know, I, I think the Vikings did a great job. I mean, Kwesi has been cooking all off season, including the draft. Been seeing it all over Twitter. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's great to see he's getting the right pieces. It, you know, it, it sends a, a message to the locker room like, hey, we're trying to, you know, put the right group together so we can win football games now. And obviously everybody inside the building wants to see that the fans want to see that. And, uh, you know, you know, these guys are all very young, talented guys that had a lot of success. Of course, they got to prove it uh, at this level, but just based off, you know, the, the clips I've seen of these uh, new guys, you know, I think they're going to fit right in. And, you know, what I love about Minnesota is you know it's a very welcoming organization and they they take care of their players and they make sure everyone um you know is gonna feel welcome feel like they belong and make sure that you know they get them right so they're performing well on sundays and we saw the video of like kevin o'connell greeting uh jj mccarthy and and everybody on twitter was making jokes talking about you know that's that's one of the whitest welcomes you know like hey buddy get over <laughs> here like what, what do you have? What's that hat you have? You know, like it was just super welcoming, fun. Uh, people made jokes because, you know, there's always the jokes with Key and Peele about how certain like Saquon Barkley, you know, he did the homeboy handshake with a couple of guys and he saw the front office guys and, and gave them the professional. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that like? You know, was you and Kevin O'Connell like did like did he hug you? Like, was it a commissioner? Like, did, like what what was it like the first time you got to sit down with Kevin O'Connell? No, oh, he came up and gave me one of these, dapped me up. Um, <laughs> You know, he was just a very enthusiastic person right from the get-go. Yeah. You could tell when, you know, it was me and the rest of the guys that were signing on that um, first day, just how excited he was. And, you know, again, like I said, he just made everyone feel comfortable and made them feel welcome. And he's just – he's an out, obviously an outstanding coach, but he's just a – you can tell right from the get-go, a fun guy you know, you're going to love working for and um, just how he operates in the building and, you know, the people he puts around the players, like he's a, he's a head coach that cares a lot, um, not just about winning, but about his team. And, uh, he, you know, it's, I think JJ McCarthy said it, like, it's a guy you, you want to run through a brick wall for it. Like that's the absolute truth. And when you came back to Minnesota, how many text messages have you gotten oh, like for like tickets or like, Hey, I'm coming to like, I'm trying to come to this game. I know the Falcons are coming back to town. I'm trying to see Kirk. Can I get tickets at like, how are you preparing for that? Because getting people to come to Houston, they have to pay for flights or they have to like plan it out. Minnesota is like, Hey, I'm here, man. Like, let me know when I can come. I'm coming. So have you created like a family calendar 
or are you just already set money aside to say, here's the tickets I know I need to buy every week. And then here's like the maybes or like, what, what is that looking like for you being home? Honestly, I haven't thought about it too much, but I know it's going to be a problem. I definitely have thought about before we I get into training camp that, you know, I need to have a plan for that. But as of now, you know, I definitely will, you know, have maybe a few games where I'll take care of people uh, probably early on in the season. But after that, like, it's going to be as simple as this. You want tickets, I can get them at a discount. Ticket window closes Thursday night. I'm going to need that Venmo by <laughs> Thursday morning. That's how it's going to work. Uh, <laughs> that's smart. I was going to say the other thing you should do is you got to like, whether it's your girlfriend, whether it's your mom or your dad or your agent, you should make sure you put somebody in charge of like the early on, like here's the, the list. So that you're not having to be the no guy, you know, kind of yeah. say that way you like if they text you, like, hey man, yeah, my agent, he's taking care of it. Like, here's his number. And then he's gonna, you know, he's gonna get that list together for you so you can just go play football. Um, because you know, saying no is hard to do. Trust me, if I ask you, I'm paying. So don't worry about that. <laughs> um, but I know advice, I will. Though. I'm gonna have to take that one up. Oh, yeah, definitely. Cause like, I mean, your 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 girlfriend or your dad or whoever, your mom, like whatever, like your agent, like not say they don't have anything to do. But they wouldn't mind that. Like on a Tuesday, Wednesday, they're going to make sure they handle that for you so that you can just focus on football. Like, yeah, you don't need to be sitting up there responding to text messages and then people, oh, let me get back to you by Thursday, man, if I want them or not. Like, no, no, you need to let me know now. Like, if you ain't let me know, I'm done with it. Because, yeah, I know the whole ticket winner because I, I, I used Thielen before. I've used CJ Ham before. Um, so, yeah, I, I, but I'm, I'm definitely the like, hey, I'll be over at the facility. I'll just come, you know, drop off whatever, like Daniil. I used to do it with Daniil every once in a while. So, um, yeah, trust me, get a person because <laughs> oh, you're from here. And so you're going to have probably, I mean, you might have your like old math teacher reach out to you that hasn't talked to you in years, but they're like, oh, I would love to come see you play and support you. Like, okay, <laughs> like, get a ticket. <laughs> Definitely but, have you know, people come out of the woodworks. That's that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, your first summer after this season, Lake Minnetonka, they're going to be looking for you. Like, because now they know you're here. Now they know, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, before we came on, you know, again, being a Minnesota kid, being from here, we thought you were talking about buying a house. Um, you know, what made you kind of like say, you know what? Like, I'm signing the deal here. I know I want to be here. Probably, I, you know, probably, I don't know if you want to retire Viking. Um, but what, what led to the thought of like, I, I do want to buy a house now? Well, a, I'm just sick and tired of traveling up, at, uh, an elevator with, you know, 10 bags of groceries on both my, my arms and living in an apartment. But, uh, you know, it's because I'm from here, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, you know, where I'll be, you know, four or five years from now. Uh, but regardless, Minnesota, may have, it'll always be home to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said, you know, it was my first time kind of, you know, signing a big deal, get my meat and potatoes and having some security. And obviously that comes with, you know, a lot of responsibility and, you know, you still got to handle your business, but, um, you know, just the idea of finally having a home and, uh, you know, sense of, I guess, community, like, you know, it's just something I'm ready for. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to finally move into a home and kind of have my house set up the way I want to. You know, I've always had a dream of having my own little man cave with all the yeah. jerseys I've collected oh, yeah. over the years. So things like that, you know, I've always thought of and looked forward to. So uh, very excited about it. I'm going to say, yeah, make sure you're nice to your neighbors because I know whenever it snowed, uh, they would shovel Kirk Cousins' driveway. I think they did it before him, too, though. I think I forgot who the quarterback was, but there was a story before Kirk. Uh, oh, Case Keenum. Yeah, Case Keenum okay. had his – his his and, and his was for sure, like, after the miracle, though. Like, everybody was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, Case Keenum. You know, so after the miracle, he was getting his driveway shovel. And then when Kirk came, it happened with him a couple of times. But I do remember the Case Keenum snowstorm, and then people were, like, shoveling his snow so he didn't have to do anything. Um, but yeah, make sure you're nice to your neighbors because you're back home in Minnesota now. You know it's snow. You haven't had to deal with some like what is what, are, what like even with that like you've been in Texas during the winter. Mm -hmm. What is your like even with that your thoughts like oh, I'm back in Minnesota now with the snow. I know you grew up here. You played for the Gophers, so you're used to it. But when did that hit you too? Like ah, oh, you know it's gonna be cold come around October this year. 
I thought about it right away. I mean, we had like a little cold front in Houston this year. I want to say like middle end December. And there was two days in a row we were at practice. It was like 20, low 20s. And we were out there and I was like, damn, like it is freezing out here. I'm like, is Houston making me soft? But uh, I like to think, you know, you know, being cold, you know, kind of a mindset. And I'll get back to, uh, you know, I remember in high school, I think it was the semifinals game my senior to go to the state championship. And we were playing playing Maple Grove at Hopkins High School, neutral site. And I think with the wind chill, it was like negative 12 degrees. I went out there, no sleeves, hooping. So that's my, you know, expectation, you know, you know, whether we're playing in Chicago or Green Bay late in the year, like that's how it's going to be. Yeah, and you get a chance to play Chicago twice now, you get Caleb Williams. You got Caleb Williams, you got Keenan Allen. Uh, the Bears have like loaded up. When you think about playing the number one draft pick, because you have played with one in C.J. Stroud, now you're going to play against one in Caleb Williams. Um, as a rookie, when you're a defensive guy, what's your mindset on trying to like make it absolute hell for him or really just don't let him get comfortable in a game like that? Well, I think it uh, is what you said right there, not letting him get comfortable. You know, that's what's great about Flores defense. Just, you know, the offense constantly has to be thinking on their toes and uh, keeps them guessing. So, uh, you know, I think the scheme will take care of itself. But, you know, as a as players, like you, you got to take advantage of the ops when you get them. You know, there's times where a lot of times guys will come free on a blitz. And, you know, a guy like Caleb Williams, he's got all the tools, uh, you know, can invade pressure. So, you know, you got to make those those ops, those moments count. Uh, but, you know, hopefully Caleb Williams, not, I hope he, you know, has a lot of success and has a great career, but hopefully he's never playing good against us because, uh, you know, it's it's never good when the, the quarterback's having a great day. Yeah, I definitely agree with that one, too, because I'm like, uh, like, I want the kid to do good. But yeah, not against Minnesota. Like this, let's just let's taper it down for a little bit. Uh, but when you think about the historic Minnesota Vikings, like you grew up hearing about the Purple People Eaters. You grew up, you know, Randy Moss, Chris Carter, Jake Reed. Now you're going to get a chance to be a part of the storied history of the Minnesota Vikings. You know, all the, you know, the Paul Krauses and all the names you've heard, you know, growing up. And, you know, the uh, Amara Rashad's, Adrian Peterson's, you know, all that. Mm-hmm. What What is that going to feel like for you the first time coming out the tunnel, knowing all those that came before you? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't even know what I'm going to be feeling, but I know – you know, that, that first time I take the field, you know, I'll be taking it all in. Uh, you know, I, I've over the years, I haven't been to too many Vikings games, but all the mm-hmm. ones I, I've been to, you know, it's the perfect environment, uh, you know, to play a football game in. The fans are great. The, the, the bank's always rocking. Uh, but, you know, you know, my goal is to, you know, establish myself as, you know, a great Minnesota Viking, no matter how long uh, my time here is. But, uh, you know, I think as a competitor that, that, that should be your goal every day, you know, to be the best version of yourself and best player you can be. And, uh, you know, with, you know, signing a deal and being back home, you know, that's probably the, the one thing that's been on my mind the most is just, you know, that accountability and, and, you know, just, there is that, I feel like extra sense of uh, pressure, you know, that's just lingering there because you know, everyone knows you, you're a hometown kid, but, you know, I, I, I would love nothing more than to, you know, go out there and dominate on Sundays and make every Minnesota Viking fan, my family and friends here, uh, you know, happy and proud. Yeah. Cause that's, I mean, that's the thing too. Like I know everybody was just like the Gophers. I saw their Instagram right away. I kind of heard it from the Vikings before. Cause you're, I mean, honestly, you were a name I threw out there when I talked about free agency, I didn't think it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, like I'm starting to see it pop up. I've been, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm lying. I've been on a I've been on a hot streak lately, um, of like these type of things. Like I, I said, mm-hmm. Kyrie Jackson on our show, um, and I won twenty bucks because of that because I just like that was the name I looked at. He's a six three corner out of Oregon. I'm like he he's a Caleb Evans. He fits exactly what Brian Flores wants: long, long arms, can really control space, plays well in space, cover two, he doesn't get lost. You know, cover four, he knows you know how to stay the deepest than the deepest in his zone. Like he plays well in that system. And so then also say Christian Darrisaw, they draft him. I say Justin mm-hmm. Jefferson. When everybody's like Justin Jefferson's not going to be there at, at twenty one or twenty two, 
He was there for the Vikings. Like, you know, I said J.J. McCarthy, October 7th, 2023, and the Vikings drafted him. And so I said J.J. McCarthy before everybody else fell in love with him. I said it because I saw Quasey talking to him at a game. And then I saw the kid. I'm like, he's 6'3", 210 pounds or 200 pounds. I'm like, you know, and then I talked to his coach, you know, his receivers coach is Ron Bellamy. So I've been on it. And so now the Blake Cashman just adds to the list of things that I've kind of gotten right. And I'm glad I got it right. Um, but when PJ Fleck, you know, like, like, what was that like for like the Gophers too? When you, when you, when they got, cause I'm pretty sure they reached out to you, but what was their kind of like, Hey Blake, welcome to home or whatever. Yeah, they were obviously very excited and happy for me. Just let me know how proud they are. And of course, you know, they're thrilled that I'm back here in the, in the cities. So, uh, you know, they all mentioned how they, you know, expect and want to see my face around the building a little bit more. So <laughs> I still owe them a, a visit here soon. I keep telling them I'm going to come and I let things get in the way, but, um, you know, it'd be great. You know, I, I, I can now probably get to a game this year and, oh yeah. Uh, you know, it's I've taken to Neil Hunter, now, but I definitely want to pop out on some of their their spring practices and whatnot. So uh, it'll be great to be back in the building and uh, see some of those guys. You can definitely make it to a game like I've taken Daniel Hunter to a gopher game. Uh, Linval Joseph came with me. Um, who else came out? B.C. Johnson came to a game. You can definitely Gabe Henderson, who works for the Vikings. He came out there. You can definitely make it to a game uh, for you is going to be making sure, you know, like when you can do it. But you for sure will be able to do it because mm -hmm. I've I've had other guys that have nothing to do with the Gophers, um, but they wanted to come because, you know, they were like, oh, the college experience is so different from their school. It was like kids in the candy store. They were walking around the stadium. They got to come down on the field. And uh, like some of those guys, like Daniil went to LSU, so he's used mm -hmm. to that. But some of those other guys like Limbaugh and, and I forgot the other guy who was with us, but. They went to, um, oh, Shamar, uh, was it Steffens, I think? or But they went to smaller schools. And so they're like, mm -hmm. man, this is kind of cool. Like, you know, TCF Bank was, and now it's Huntington Bank, uh, mm -hmm. was rocking. You know, I think, I forgot what game I took them to. I think um, Gabe told me like Ohio State maybe or Michigan. Oh, Michigan. And so, okay. you know, it's always a good one when you, and then I think one of them came to Wisconsin game. Um, and then the other one came to Maryland. That's what it was. It was Maryland. And it was uh, Tug Tagovailoa's little brother was there. But when you think about, you know, before we get out of here, a couple quick ones. When you think about your kind of legacy with the Gophers and now being back and now being a Viking, and then you think about because you were under Kiel first, right? And then you have Fleck. Yeah. And so, right. yeah. Re recently, right. you know, Coach Kiel has said, you know, Fleck's a good coach, and I've never, you know, I'm not going to ever deny that. Blah blah. He's winning. You know, he's doing a great job recruiting. And you know, as people get older, they start to realize like some of the issues they might have had were made up in their head, and they probably overthought it. To hear Kale say that now that PJ is a good coach and so on and so forth, and he's winning, he's doing a good job at the school. Um, how do you feel about that? Because I know like some players that were under Kiel that came with Fleck, or some players that never went under Fleck. You know, like it's kind of been a weird like mom and dad type thing with mm -hmm. some guys. Uh, but for you to hear Fleck or Kiel kind of say that, like Fleck's a good coach, like what what are your what comes to mind with you? I think it's great. You know, you can't you can't deny the facts, the numbers, the results that. Uh, Fleck has done there. He's done a great job and, uh, you know, is continuing to, you know, take the program in the right direction. So, you know, regardless of what era uh, or what coach you played for, you know, you should want to see uh, your school do well and continue to do well. And, uh, you know, I think that's a you know great gesture by Coach Kill, you know, just giving the man his respect because I believe didn't uh, Fleck coach under Kill? Like, yep a uh, long long time ago long time ago yeah i think it was like uh illinois state or northern illinois or something like that or, yeah yeah he was under kill in that staff and then he went on to the 49ers and then so on and so mm -hmm. forth western michigan and yeah yeah but you know you know we're all we're all a football family you know a lot of paths cross and whether it be players or coaches it's you know one big network so you know i think it's always the right thing to do to give people their respect and when you think about your time at minnesota being back on campus now as a pro because you i mean you've been there before as a texan but now as a viking it's like a different vibe like like gopher fans now even though they cheered you on as a as a texan they're really behind you now as a viking because you always hear gopher fans say that like oh, i wish they would have drafted anton winfield or whatever now they have their guy in blake cashman here are you looking forward to being back on campus and kind of you know getting the love and, and accepting the flowers that the, the, the school and the fans and the people want to give you 
Yeah, I won't lie. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's part of you know the experience, and um, you know, you have such a short time to you know enjoy this this journey that that each player is on, that I'm on, and uh, you know that's what makes it feel so much special for me is just feeling the love from uh, here in Minnesota. So uh, to be in this position, I definitely you know want to uh, take advantage of my time here and you know be out in the community you know, doing a, all different types of things. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I want to, um, you know, be engaged and network with all the great people here in the Twin Cities and and then, you know, win a lot of football games and make uh, Minnesota Viking fans very happy and very proud. And when you talk about the games, before we get out of here, when you look at the, I don't know if you looked at the schedule, that's my job. When you look at the schedule, and I'm going to just throw some teams out there, you got the Texans, they're coming back to Minnesota to play you. Um, you you got the 49ers with Devondre Campbell. Uh, you got the Falcons with Kirk Cousins. You got the Jets coming with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, of course, you got the Bears with uh, their quarterback. You got the Jags with, with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, you got the Rams with Matthew Stafford. You got Boye Mafe and the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, there's a lot. And then, of course, you got your boy Carter Coughlin and the Giants, as well as Tyler Newbin with the Giants now mm-hmm. and – uh, John Michael Schmidt, is there a game or a game or two that you've kind of circled? Like, I can't wait to go play that game this year. Well, of course, you always circle the ones that, that your former team. So, you know, I'm very excited to uh, play the Texans and the Jets. You know, last year, you know, we went as a as Houston Texans, we went into New York MetLife Stadium and, you know, we did not play good ball. So that one still stings walking out of there with with an L. But uh, yeah, we play a lot of great teams and, you know, you got to respect every opponent, you know, each week because any, anybody can win or lose yeah. any given Sunday. We all know that. Uh, but, you know, that's what makes you know playing in the NFL so awesome is you get to play all these great athletes, these great players and guys that have been doing it for a long time. And, um, yeah, you, you obviously want to, you know, win every, every uh, opportunity in every game, but, uh, you know, to step on the field with some of these greats is is always a privilege. And you were a, you grew up a Minnesota Timberwolf fan. You're from here. Uh, they haven't had a, a playoff win or anything since Kevin Garnett. They just swept the Suns. You were at Game One. Um, just how has that been too? Like being from here now, being a part of the pro scene as a Viking, and now seeing the Timberwolves do so well. I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, I. I haven't seen the Target Center, you know, that electric and probably since the KG days. Yeah. Uh, and you know, growing up, my dad and I, we had season tickets to the game. So I think, you know, we used to go like once, twice a week to, to Wolves games. So uh, to see them have all the success and, you know, such a fun team to watch. You know, they, they got they got great role players. Um, you know, they've obviously had a very strong uh, season this year and, you know, I'd love nothing more than to see the the Timberwolves hoist up, you know, that trophy in the NBA Finals. But uh, you know, I, I'm just glad that they extended, you know, to the next round, and you know, we have more basketball games at the Target Center. Yeah, yeah, you're probably gonna get the Nuggets at some point. It'd be nice to get the Lakers, but it's probably not gonna happen. Uh, you're gonna have the Nuggets coming to Minnesota, so I know I talked to Michael Grady about that. I know I'm gonna try to get out there if I can. Uh, but yeah, it's been a fun season with that. But I'm super excited for you, Blake. I can't wait to be on the at the games, be on the sidelines, see you pregame, and just kind of like it's it's a because I again I've seen you play high school ball at Eden Prairie because of Carter, and then I mm-hmm. saw you of course college because you went to my school, and now being able to see you because I don't know if I've ever actually paid attention when you were the opponent. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it, it's so much you have to focus on with the Vikings that you don't really remember any of the opponents. Like you, I mean, other, unless it's like a top quarterback, you don't really have time. Uh, you know, it's my job. I know the players yeah. do. And that's not my job to worry about every single player of the other team. But now I'm excited because I know Brian Flores. I've talked to him a couple of times. He actually lives down the street. Um, talked to him a couple of times. Talked to him about his defense. And now seeing, and I talked to Josh Metellus Thursday, actually, and uh, I'm excited. Like, I'm not going to give a lot away. I know you know what's going on around there with that defense. Uh, but, like, hearing Josh Metellus even talk about it, I'm excited to what's going to unfold this season. And I'm, I'm really excited to see you thrive in this because, you know, losing Eric Kendricks, losing Jordan Hicks, I knew they had to get a guy. 
And I've seen you be that guy. Like I've seen you work as a safety, then move to linebacker and just work, work, work. And here you are. So I'm super proud of you, man. And uh, look forward to seeing you around the facility because I know I'll be up there on like Tuesdays and some of the Thursdays. Um, so it'd be fun. And then, of course, training camp. I'll be out there for a little mm-hmm. bit of training camp, too. So um, I know you're going to get hit up, too. Everybody's going to come to training camp because they want to see you out there and, <laughs> and be around it. But it should be fun for you. Uh, but look forward to catching you this season, man. We'll have to get you back. Like, hopefully the Timberwolves make it to the NBA Finals. And, and then we'll have to get you back and just talk basketball because I know you were a hooper. Uh, I don't know if you were good. Uh, I remember you played. I don't know how good you are. I can't remember. I know Carter Coughlin could not make a layup on a fast break. <laughs> I do I remember held, that. I, I wasn't great, but I held my own. I, I, was, <laughs> I was all conference. Okay. Because I remember Carter's big thing was like he would get on a fast break and just lose it. Like he might make it. He might grab the rim or he might throw it off the backboard and start a fast break for somebody else. Like he was Antetokounmpo's brother. Like that's what he reminded me of. The Nassis Antetokounmpo was what Carter Coughlin was on the basketball court. You might get something good, and you might get a, a shack and a fool moment. Uh, but I'm Ron Johnson. That's Blake Cashman. Coming up next, we got the Daily Three. That's three questions, three minutes each, and we'll be back after work from our sponsors. Great stuff from Blake Cashman. We're brought to you by Monopoly Go. And uh, I gotta. I, I know what you're saying. You're saying flag on the play. You already talked about this, but there's so much good stuff in this game. I got to keep telling you to download Monopoly Go like the other 150 million people that have done it. Team up with your friends and your buddies for time tournaments, work together, build up your boards, win awesome prizes. You can win unique stickers that you can trade uh, to complete albums for big prizes. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting friends. Really, the trash talk is the most fun part. Uh, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day, constantly changing tournaments and challenges. There's always new timed events, help you win big, massive multipliers uh, and rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover at Monopoly Go. So get off the bench, go download it now on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Well, now it's time for the Daily Three. That's three questions. It's been about a minute each today. Take it away, Sam. Ron Johnson. Let's start with uh, one more quick Vikings note. This came across the wire yesterday. There is a reported mutual interest between the Vikings and longtime Cincinnati receiver Tyler Boyd, 29-year-old who has 6,000 career yards, 31 career touchdowns. Would that be an upgrade for the Vikings at wide receiver three over what they had uh, last year with K.J. Osborne? Uh, So... Here's the thing I go with KJ Osborne. When you think about, you know, his receptions, you think about his receiving yards, uh, you think about like his lack of usage, I guess you'll say, because Tyler Boyd had some time without some of these big weapons in uh Cincy. And so he had kind of built his own until they start drafting dog after dog after dog. And so he just kind of got pushed down on the uh on the totem pole. The only reason I would say it's it's kind of a wash. I wouldn't say a complete upgrade. I would say it's a wash. Like Tyler Boyd and KJ Osborne to me, I, I would say are about the same type of receiver. The biggest difference with Tyler Boyd, though, is going to be his size. You know, he gives you a little bit more size to KJ Osborne. You know, he's around 6'3, 6, uh, 6, 6'2, 6, 6'3, uh, where KJ Osborne was around. I mean, in my opinion, you know, KJ Osborne's probably right around like six feet, six one. I'm not sure what they listed him at. Uh, but when you look at Tyler Boyd, that's what um, I, I got. Like KJ, yeah, I think KJ is like six feet. And that, and again, if he's if he, I, I would say five eleven, like you know how people are, they say they're six feet. Yeah. But Tyler Boyd gives you about a six two, six three frame, longer, taller. So can he give you the same middle of the field production of KJ Osborne? Yeah. Can he use some of the same deep balls of KJ Osborne? Yeah. Where's it change? In the red zone, if you put him out wide and you like the matchup, you can throw him a fade route because with JJ, with Addison, and with Hawkinson, Tyler Boyd probably gets cornerback three or four. And so with that, if you're if Tyler Boyd, Boyd can't beat receiver three or sorry, DB three yeah. or four in the red zone, then no, it's not an upgrade. But I think he can. And so, yeah, if if he realizes like, look, I'm I, all my offers. I can go here probably with an offense is going to spread the ball around. We know Osborne, Addison, and JJ all got off in different games. He probably realizes, you know, this is my chance to probably be a part of a good organization, a good offense. And maybe it's just a, you know, maybe it's just a launch pad. He's trying to relaunch his career and get somewhere else. 
but he also knows like I'm 29. I probably can win with the Vikings. And in the next two or three years, this offense under JJ McCarthy probably is going to be really good. So I think it'd be a slight upgrade, but more so in the red zone. Yeah. It seems valuable too, that if, if Hawkinson's missing significant time, if Correct. It's like six to eight games, you're going to want to have a high end wide receiver three. And I think that's what Boyd would be. Uh, next one, Ron, mm-hmm. got to get your take on Anthony Edwards. We will talk about this at length in the Minnesota basketball party tomorrow, but mm-hmm. he goes for 49 rebounds and six assists in a closeout game four. your thoughts on the Wolves sweep and Edwards performance. Uh, he's a baller and he was mic'd up. I don't know if you saw that he's mic'd up for game four. So just listening to him throughout the game, I listened to it this morning. It, it's, it's poetic. It's funny. It's it's entertaining and it's real. Like he's not saying anything. Like some people, you know, they put the mic on and they they act up a little bit and they start talking more than they talk. he. Like I know for the mic'd up people too, they're like, dang, he ain't really saying much because he's not. He doesn't say a ton, but when he says it, it's funny. Like you know, like he's telling KD, you're not getting that again. Like don't don't try it again. Or man, you knew if I got that ball, I was gonna dunk on you. Like he's just talking like normal basketball. He's not trying to be a coach. He's not. The funniest too is he said it in the huddle too. He's like, man, stop effing fouling. Like, what are y'all doing, man? If, they, if y'all stop fouling, they would not be in this game. And so that's why he went to the press and everybody's still on his mind. Like, man, he's got to stop fouling. But they were, like, he realized that. Like, free throws were the only thing going to keep the Suns in that game. And so he's like, look, just let them miss some of these shots. Stop pushing them when we don't need to. But, yeah, he he had a great game. Uh, he, he's an absolute weapon now. He's put the world on notice, the fact that he swept the Suns. Um, it, it's hard for the media now not to talk about him even though they're still doing it because they're talking about LeBron and Bronny coming to the Lakers. And they're talking about, <laughs> it's hard to not talk about them, but they're still trying it. But now you got the nuggets. They got to get on the road, maybe with or without Chris Finch, depending on what he has to do with his leg. Um, but yeah, he, he had an awesome game four. Uh, and that's one of those things now, like now let's go win the next one. Like you gotta, you beat the nuggets. Yeah. You're all but in because now you go and, and it's probably OKC. It'll probably be OKC and the nuggets or OKC and uh, the Timberwolves. But now you have a really, really high chance of going to the NBA Finals. Yeah. Yeah. Can someone give OKC a, a game? The Pelicans didn't have Zion. That wasn't really a fair series. We need the the Nuggets or Clippers need to test OKC a little bit. Um, let's get just a, a quick, quick reaction, Ron, for our final question on the Wolves Nuggets series. Nuggets closed it out in five last night against the Lakers. Jamal Murray, another game winning shot right before the buzzer. Um, how do you think the Wolves stack up? I think they stack up just fine. If they play the way they play, stay out of foul trouble, uh, put multiple defenders, the way they rotated the defense, put multiple defenders on Jokic, don't let Jamal Murray get open shots, always keep a hand in his face. That might be Jay McDaniels even on him. Um, I'm, I'm like, Or well, Anthony Edwards, actually, on, on Murray. I'm looking forward to this series. It's going to be a back-and-forth battle. Anthony Edwards can take over games now. We know that. And so I'm really excited to watch this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Starts on Saturday. We don't have a game time yet, but Saturday, game one. And then uh, I believe Wednesday, game three at Target Center. Yep. Well, make sure you find out where Locked On Sports is. It's on YouTube 24 7. It's our live stream. Make sure you check all of our sports shows out around the clock. That's Vikings, Wild Wolves, Twins, and Gophers all hours of the day. I want to thank you guys. Make sure, again, make sure you tell your friends to subscribe, find us, like, and join, and share, and tell everybody about us. Locked on Sports Minnesota, Ron Johnson Show. Thank you guys, and have a great week. 